Hi everyone, I hope you're okay and I hope that the videos we keep uploading are helping you out. This is the fifth video guys where I'm tackling questions on electrodynamics. Please do expect a total number of 11 videos since the worksheet I've compiled has 11 questions in total. So please guys do take this seriously because all of these questions are extracted from past exam question papers and it's very very important for you to know how to tackle such questions. I strongly believe that it will give you an edge whenever you write your examination. So please do share the video to your peers so that they may have the same edge as well. And please guys do help us grow the channel by just subscribing. Okay, we are told that learners want to build a small DC motor as a project. Are you together? The, uh, and then we are, we, we are just required to write down three essential components that are needed for the building of a motor. Since you are dealing with a motor, guys, ne? Since we are dealing with a motor, remember that, guys, a motor is a device that, that, uh, that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. Are we together? So since it, since it converts electrical energy, that means we will need an external source of energy. Are we together? We will need an external source of energy. Uh, it can be a battery or, or, or whatsoever. Are we together? But please do note, we need an external source of energy. Are you together guys and then secondly we will need split ring commutators why do we need split ring commutators because we are dealing with a dc motor a direct excuse me a direct current motor if it was an ac an, an, an ac motor rather we were going to use slip ring commutators but since we are dealing with the dc that's why we, we will need split rings are you together so firstly we need an external source since you're dealing with the motor secondly we need split rings thirdly uh, we need a coil a rotating coil or you can say an armature uh, fourthly we need uh, magnets are you together so that you can have magnetic field so uh, I've already mentioned four guys and and and, and all they wanted was three of them now so just pick any three on, 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 on the four that I've listed. Okay. An electrical device with a resistance of 11 ohms is connected to an AC source with an RMS voltage of 240 volts. First question, they want us to define the term RMS voltage. Okay. Uh, the root mean square voltage, guys, please note that um, is the alternating potential difference which dissipates the same amount of energy as an equivalent direct current potential difference. Let me repeat. The root mean square voltage is the AC potential difference, or you can, or, or, or you can, you can, simply, you can simply write the full name. Instead of AC, you can simply write alternating current. Né? The root mean square voltage is the AC potential difference, which dissipates the same amount of energy as an equivalent DC potential difference. That's the definition of the term R R RMS voltage. Né? And then now they want us to calculate the maximum current. Okay. Uh, remember that, guys, we are still, we can still apply Ohm's law over here, guys. Né? Uh, v RMS is equal to I RMS multiplied by the resistance. So I RMS will be equal to V RMS all over the resistance. Are you together? But remember that, guys, there is an equation at the back of your, for, of, of your question paper. It says I RMS is basically equal to the peak current or the maximum current divided by the square root of 2. So whenever I come across I RMS, I will simply substitute I max divided by root 2. This will be equal to the RMS voltage, which is 240 volts, divided by the resistance, which is just 11. I can multiply both sides by the square root of 2. Multiply both sides by root 2. Such that uh, this will cancel that. And then I'll be left with I max, the, which is the peak current is equal to 240 divided by 11. 
240 divided by 11 multiplied by the square root of 2. And then we'll find our answer in amperes. Uh, 240 divided by 11 multiplied by the square root of 2. So the maximum current is just 30.86 amperes. That's how, guys, we're supposed to tackle that question over there. So please do stay tuned, guys, and wait for more videos. Thank you for your time.